What's up everyone? Lance Hedrick here and today we're finally going to talk about the Niche Zero Grinder. Alright, so I have had this grinder now for exactly one year. I got it on May 31st of 2021 and I'm shooting today. Actually, it's June 1st, 2022. So I guess one year and one day. And the reason for that is because, well, this is arguably the most hyped home grinder of all time. Everybody seems to want one. The prices keep going up around the world. They tend to get favorable reviews left and right. And some of the biggest names in coffee have given them big, uh, big reviews. So when I got mine in, I was you know, hesitant to say anything about it because, well, there were already a ton of reviews on it. Well, after having this a year, using it for many videos as you've likely seen, using it at home for a lot of different reasons and just testing it day in and day out for a year, I finally feel I have some things to say about it that are justified. Now, again, this is a very hyped up grinder. I know a lot of you love this grinder. I know a lot of you want this grinder. So I want to ensure that I communicate that what I'm saying in this video is extremely nuanced. So don't get upset if what I say sounds negative, okay? There are some pros and cons, in my opinion, on this grinder, and I also want to just take a look at why it's received the hype that it has, and I have some theories as to why. And then we're going to make some coffee with it, and we're going to just talk about the flavor profile that I have picked up on over the past year. So, first of all, let's just go into the pros, because there are incredible pros on this machine. First of all, a lot. well, I guess this would be a pro for some and a con for some. I've read online that this is a highly... Um, splitting, I guess, uh, a, a question, which is, what do you think about the design? A lot of people think it's absolutely immaculate, it's beautiful, it's really unique, and a lot of people absolutely despise it. Um, I'm actually curious what you all think below. I might put a poll on, on the community forum, but what do you think, put in the comments below, What are you someone that loves this design? Do you think this looks really cool? Or, or do you think it's, you know, god awful? I, I actually like the aesthetic. I think it looks quite nice. Um, I'm into it. I, I think that's a, a big draw for a lot of people. It's compact, it's, it's built really well, really nice quality components, and yeah. So I think that is, that is a nice pro. Another pro, and this is the biggest pro of all in my opinion, uh, it has bar none the best workflow of any grinder I've ever used. It's very simple. Pop the lid, whoops, don't throw it aggressively like that. You pop the lid, you dump the dose, toss it down, turn it on, turn it off. It's not plugged in right now, sorry. Um, turn it on, let it go, turn it off. Now, one of the big marketing ploys for Niche is that it's zero attention, Niche zero. Now, I've not experienced that. In fact, I actually use bellows on this. I'll take the top off, I put a bellows right here, pop, pop and I get another two tenths or three tenths of a gram of retention come out. Of course, if you're running this multiple times, you'll probably get out what you're putting in, maybe because stuff is being caught in here, but if you clean your burrs out, if you're ensuring that you get as much out as you can, you're going to experience some retention. Now, another big positive of this, another big pro, is that they are actually using Mazarconi burrs, which are a, a tried and true nice set of conical burrs in cafes, historically. So it is a well-known burr set that uh, the Mazarconis have used for a long time. Sorry, I'm just wiping off some grounds. Um, so it, it's got a, a, a well-established burr set inside of it. Um, yeah, so it, there, there are some really great pros about this machine objectively. Objectively, the uh, workflow, I think, is the best. And objectively, uh, the design is unique. Uh, now, whether or not you're on the side of loving it or hating it, who's to say? Again, I'd love to hear in the comments below. Anyway, after about a year of using it, what I have noticed is another few reasons why I think this has incredible hype. And now, listen to me when I say this. These are reasons, not negative things, necessarily. These are just my observations as to why I think it is now sold out constantly. You have aftermarket prices, you have massive up pricing on certain countries, etc. And I think that these kind of explain it. Uh, number one is, uh, is that workflow that I noticed and mentioned earlier that is absolutely objective. I think that that is a huge appeal for a lot of people because you don't have to fill up a hopper, you don't have to hack a machine for single dosing, you don't have to fool around with bellows. There's not a lot of static. You can use RDT for this, but it's not a super staticky machine like the DF64 or some others. It, it does a good job. 
Uh, and so I think that is one of the big reasons that it is super famous. Second big reason, and I think this is a massive reason, this machine gives even the most novice of coffee brewer, the most, the most green in, in the coffee world, and a coffee enthusiast that just started, it is going to give them good coffee. Good coffee, like pretty, pretty decent coffee, because it has an incredibly wide particle distribution. Now, I recently saw from a friend who has access to a laser particle uh, diffractor, I saw a comparison between this niche and then a Breville uh, grinder that had the six core Etzinger burrs in it. Now, in the US, I don't think we have any of the grinders with that. Most of them are pentagonal, it's the five spokes, uh, but there are some models released around the world that have the ones made by Etzinger and Liechtenstein uh, that have six spokes uh, that are much nicer burrs, much more similar to what you'd find in like the Sete and other like Baratza grinders that use Etzinger. Etzinger. Um, anyway, I saw this, uh, this objectively diffracted laser analysis uh, of, many, of many samples and the niche had a much wider distribution than this Breville with the Etzinger burrs. So, I mean, that's, that's pretty telling first of all, but also I think what's happening is because it's such a wide particle distribution, you're able to get uh, inside of that hump that range, essentially if you think of good shots in a big bell curve, the bell curve is more flattened with the niche. So you can have from here to here is gonna be like good shots. Now it is more flattened, so the best shot is gonna be like 70% of what full potential might be, right? So you have like this big long curve. So even people who are just starting, they can pop it in second try, they're gonna get like a good shot and they're gonna feel good about themselves and they're gonna attribute it to the grinder, which they should because the grinder is doing that. Um, now on top of that, uh, uh, something I like to bring up when discussing the particle distribution of this machine is, is I like to use this analogy. Now if you aren't familiar with golf at all, this may not help a lot, but essentially in golf when you just start, you get a style of clubs called cavity bags. They're kind of bigger faced irons and they have a bigger sweet spot. Now as you progress in golf, you tend to move to what are called blades. They're much smaller golf heads, uh, iron heads. They're very small, uh, but they give you a much more control. So when people on the PGA Tour, you're seeing them with these style of clubs called blades. But when you're just starting out, or if you're kind of an amateur, or if you're just playing for fun and you're not, you know, you're not trying to make any tours, you're likely gonna play with cavity bags. They have a much bigger sweet spot. It's a lot easier to hit them, but you don't have as much control. And a 100% shot on that is not the same as a 100% shot with blades. So similar thing is happening here. Though you can max out and get a perfect shot that this can give you, it's not going to match, say, um, you know, other grinders that have uh, a, a more narrow particle distribution. Now, I'm saying all this, I know a lot of you are like itching that uh, I'm saying something negative. This is not negative. This is 100% a subjective thing in the sense that your taste, taste in general is subjective. What this produces may be perfect for you. You may like grinders with massively wide particle distributions and that is completely valid. Everybody throughout Italy loves Robusta that's really dark with really wonky extractions and then with really heavy crema dumping a spoonful of sugar makes a medicine go down. I think Mary Poppins wrote the song about Robusta Espresso. Maybe. Maybe not. For me that's the only way I can get that medicine down. Um, that's, that's subjective. It's okay for me to have that opinion. It's okay for you to have your opinion. Um, so this is making coffee easy for a lot of people, though acquiring this is not so easy. So I, I don't use this ever actually for my own personal enjoyment because it tends to mute out, nullify a lot of the nuanced flavors to complex flavors that I really enjoy in coffee. What drew me to coffee, I actually started working in a traditional coffee house with pretty dark roasted coffees that were very cheap, lower quality, and I did not like coffee. I couldn't drink it. If I drank coffee, it was a maple latte, a ton of high grade maple syrup with espresso and a lot of milk to, to just mellow out that nasty bitter taste. And we were actually using Mazer, uh, um, Mazer uh, grinders with the Coney burrs, Mazer Coney's. And so, yeah, I, I couldn't stand it. And it wasn't until I tried, I was gonna say proper coffee, but that would be an incorrect, that'd be a misnomer because what is proper coffee? But then I tried a lighter roasted, more specialty, higher quality grade coffee, and I fell in love. I was trying it with flatbird, uh, flatbird grinders, and it was just a different ball game. Anyway, so that's the number two reason I think this has so much hype, is it is very easy to dial in. It gives you confidence whenever you might be just starting. And then the last thing that I wanna point out is 
confirmation bias, uh, the fallacy of appeal to like figures and professionals, and what, what, what you have is a lot of big names in the coffee world highly endorse this machine, which is great. And I don't disagree in the sense that they can endorse what they want. Like all of this is subjective. I want, I want you to know that everything I say is obviously gonna have a bias towards what I prefer. I try to be as objective as possible, but I'm going to prefer sweeter, cleaner coffees. That's just the, the facts. I like high clarity. I like, I enjoy body, but I will sacrifice body for clarity 10 times out of 10. Um, ideally, I'll get a little bit of both, but it is what it is. Uh, some people prefer texture and uh, like chocolates and kind of like bitter, more bitter compounds. Some people really like those bitters. Uh, kind of like in wine drinking. If you're a wine drinker, some people really like heavy tannins. I do not. I don't like heavy tannins. I don't want my tongue to feel bitterness, okay? So, this final point is just, you know, people whom I highly respect and that I've learned a ton from, John Buckman, James Hoffman, and, and etc., really love the niche grinder. And that is great. That is valid. And maybe that's a reason you bought yours, and that's fantastic. But I wanted you to know, if you have been struggling with, for instance, filter coffee, it's because this does not do it. I will say this, this does not do a good job on filter. Even if you like darker coffees, the amount of fines it produces kind of just makes it so unbearably bitter that it's difficult to drink. But if you're someone that enjoys, enjoys traditional style coffees, more chocolates, more caramels, more toffees, and that sounds like the apex of flavor profile to you, this is probably one of the best grinders you can get at the price point. If you like everything else though, this is not your end game. This is gonna give you, you know, 50, 60, maybe 70% of where you're wanting to get. So if you're at home and you bought this niche because of the hype and you haven't been super stoked about it because you're trying to replicate what you're getting in like third wave specialty shops, or you're trying to replicate maybe tasting notes that I've given on uh, videos or tasting notes that you see people like Scott Rayo discuss or people like, um, I don't know, I can't think of anyone right now because I know I'm already getting a lot of hate comments about this, but um, yeah, that's, that might be the reason. So anyway, I just wanted to come clean about my thoughts on the niche. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and pull a shot and we'll end with just a, a little shot of espresso together. Anyway, I'm sure you noticed that the demeanor in this episode was a little different. Um, and it's because I want you to know I'm taking this seriously because this is such a hyped up grinder. I'm not, I, I'm not, I genuinely don't want to come off as like blasting into this because I do think it has an incredibly important position in the history of coffee. And it's honestly, it's changed the game a lot of ways. It's, it's called other grinder manufacturers to improve their workflow and to improve the ease of use in general. Uh, so there's a lot of goods and pros about this machine. It's not for me, and I know it won't be for a lot of you. I've had a lot of side discussions with people who have been not super stoked on what's coming out of this. Now this is not, I'm sorry, I do have one more point. This is not just a conical versus flat discussion. This also has to do with RPM, and it has to do with this specific conical style burr in general. Now, with conicals, you want lower RPM, and this isn't a secret. Even Barazza with their Sete has that running at 500 RPM. This runs at 330 RPM. And then the Weber Key that just came out runs only from 50 to 150 RPM. And then people wonder, you know, well, because people have sadly and, and blatantly and over the top said flat, unimodal, conical, bimodal, flat, clean, uh, conical, dirty, whatever. That is an oversimplification and needs to be retracted. So really, you can have high clarity with conical burrs, but you're not gonna get it at 330 RPM. You're not gonna get it at 150 RPM. You're gonna get it with hand grinding speed. That's why people in the World Brewers Cup Championship use Commandantes, they use Easy Press OK Pluses, they use Kinu in 47s. It's because you can get high clarity with them because you're going very slow. RPM is something that's rarely discussed as regards flavor profile. In my experience, which I've been professionally tasting coffee for uh, about a decade now, there's a direct correlation between RPM and flavor. And in this case, whenever you mess around with the RPM of conicals and you get lower and lower, the clarity seems to increase and the, the shot quality gets better. Now I have seen diminishing returns past about, that below about, you know, 100 RPM, maybe 80 RPM. Below that, the difference is pretty minute, but from 300 to 100, there is a, there is a big difference there. So I just wanted to make sure I wasn't coming across as conical bad, flat good, though Usually that is how I brew my coffees with flat burrs, but I do really enjoy hand grinders. Those are conical burrs. They're smaller than this even. It's just this specific set tends to produce a lot of fines and it is what it is. So, all right, 
enough babbling, blabbling, enough babbling, and we'll get weird on coffee. I haven't had any today. Maybe that's why I'm so calm. Okay, and now. All right, so I pulled the shot. I actually pulled a pretty lightly roasted coffee from my friend Tim Wendelbo. So uh, just to kind of like discuss what goes on with lightly roasted coffees pulled through the niche. I did 20 in and 50 out, which is pretty typical for me when I'm using, uh, you know, the standard Revel Dual Boiler profile, which is like a seven, eight pre, uh, second pre-infusion at about 60% pump pressure and then ramp up to around nine bar. Anyway, not you. Okay, let's just put that there. All right, let's see. So of course there's going to be acidity. You're not. There's no such thing as a grinder, really, unless you know, unless you use like a mortar and pestle. That's going to completely like mute out acidity. There is acidity in this. It's not structured. It's not balanced. It's not refined. It's not clear. It's it's there. So the shot is bright, but it's because I'm using an incredibly light roasted coffee. But the finish has a lot of bitterness on it. Whenever you're trying to push something this light. You tend to get um, you tend to get this kind of acrid, astringent type finish. Um, it's kind of biting the sides of my tongue. Even though I didn't do a, a ridiculous ratio, this is pretty pretty standard. I usually do actually a one to three ratio. This is one to two and a half. Um, the fruits in it are like are not really distinguishable. The 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 florals maybe it's there, but mostly I'm getting kind of a muted um, like light like a like a, a muted like lightly dark chocolate, if that makes sense. Not a lightly darkened chocolate, like dark chocolate, but a light amount. Um, so it's not, it, maybe that's because I'm correlating texture with dark chocolate and there's not much texture on the shot because it's so light. Um, it's more texture than I would get otherwise, but that it is also like six weeks off roast. So just where I like them. Um, so yeah, it's, um, yeah, it's interesting. The niche pulls interesting shots when it comes to light roasted coffees and not, in my opinion, in a good way. Um, it just makes it kind of confusing. I, for me, if, if this were to be my daily driver, I, I would be wanting to use like medium or darker roasted coffees because this is going to specialize in like heavier bodies, uh, creamier mouthfeels, um, and then, you know, chocolates, toffees, caramels, and those types of things. You're going to be able to get some acidity. So if anyone is telling you it completely mutes acidity, that's silly. That's just not going to happen. But it's not going to give you the refined structure of something with a, well, you know, maybe a more narrow particle distribution um, could give you. Anyway, okay. That, that is kind of my, my truth on the niche, I guess. I took a year to do this because, well, I know that there's going to be pushback. I know that likely this video will be circulated in niche groups or in groups that, um, where people, you know, highly praise a niche. And that's okay. I'm absolutely okay with that because I do feel I presented what I wanted to in a pretty articulate manner that made sure I demonstrated. I don't think this, none of those things I said are bad. It's just person to person. Uh, and I'm trying to speak in objective, as objectively as possible as regards to the particle distribution graph that I saw, which objectively shows how narrow the, the, distribution or how wide the distribution is in comparison to another conical grinder that's not necessarily a super high quality one um but yeah so i'd love to hear your thoughts below uh this niche will be going to one of my patreon supporters even though i i, I did receive this for free from niche about a year ago and i'm super grateful thank you very much um, i've had a wonderful time with it it's been fantastic for running a lot of experiments because how easy the workflow is um, but it is time to say goodbye it's time to say goodbye. And I'm gonna give this uh, to someone in my Patreon. So if that's something you're interested in, if you want to you know, help support me, get equipment for videos, I give all that back to my Patreon community on top of all the stuff I get for free. I just put up a 10 grinder giveaway last week. I'm about to give away, well, if you're watching this video in like three months, this won't apply, but I'm about to give away like multiple espresso machines and a lot of different things. Um, anyway, that is that, that's the niche. Thank you for watching. Uh, I would love for you to hit the subscribe, hit the like, leave a comment below. Um, yeah, we'll get back to goofy stuff in the next video, but I just wanted to be sure because again, I'm being redundant here, but I just, I know that there's gonna be a lot of, um, you know, people who are annoyed by this. So just know that I don't really care and uh, I'm gonna speak my mind and uh, I'm still gonna enjoy this coffee because I need coffee before I film a second video. Um, but yeah, that's about it.
Thank you. Brew something tasty today and cheers.